In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, one spring of goodness and blessings, we give you thanks and praise as one Lewisian community. The graces you incessantly grant upon us and your divine providence have sustained our beloved university throughout the years of mission and excellence. Having been founded by the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray that you keep us committed and dedicated to our mission and identity to serve the Church and the society as we become living witnesses to the Gospel values proclaimed by Jesus. For if we are steadfast in our good and beautiful mission, our works will bring success not only to ourselves, but also to those whom we are bound to love and serve. Inspired by Saint Louis, our patron saint, who was filled with a noble spirit that steered him to love you above all things, may we also live believing that we are born for a greater purpose and mission as we dwell in your presence all the days of our life. Grant all these supplications through the intercession of Mother Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. about another masterpiece of 21st century from the Philippines and the world. But before anything else, let's have first our recap. Last week, you learned about the story of Ron Darkin titled Waiting. And the summary of the essay is all about the author who got inspired to write a story about his observations when it comes to migration. The word waiting in the story symbolizes jail. It's all about our OFWs suffering from homesickness and suffocated from sadness because they are very far from their family. That is why we should always appreciate their efforts because what they are doing is not an easy task. And that is our discussion last week. For this week, we are going to delve into a new story of 21st century. But before delving into the main point of our discussion, Ponder and think first to our essential question. For you to basically understand the story, let's have first an activity, Marshall answer. Take note that you can answer the following questions before or after reading the story. You must answer the following questions basing now to your own interpretation or understanding. A five-year-old girl witnessed the story through martial law, the time of President Ferdinand Marcos, it was 1982. The safe house was their hiding place, it is found in a complex with four-story building and a four-unit every floor. 
many people are walking with their purebred dogs, there is also a clubhouse, swimming pool, a tennis court, and many more that you might find in a complex. Tell us about your experience during martial law. When I was five years old, I experienced the suffering of martial law. We are hiding in a place called the safe house. The girl woke up, wondering why there are so many people there. Many people including his father, only boys with guns. They asked her father who are them and her father answered that it was their relatives. Father who are these people? They're your relatives. Why, they have guns. Bastard. It's none of your business just go to your room. The father, with his companions, planned a meeting on how they will stop the region of President Marcos in their complex. Inside the safe house, there's too much noise, shouting and a lot of conversation that I can't understand all I know is that they're working for us. Her father with his co-revolutionaries was caught by the polices. Her mother is always crying quietly in the kitchen, sometimes when she was with her mother in the kitchen, she is listening to words she doesn't understand. Underground, revolution, taxes and bills, the mother leave the house soon after and she never returned. The police tortured him. They hurt him in his shot. Ah! They plan for a plan B that will rescue his co-revolutionaries. They raided the police's place to save their friends. Since you're done reading the story, we can now start answering the following guide questions through our activity Marshall Answer. Like what I've said a while ago, that you can answer the following guide questions before or after reading the story. Take note that you have to answer the following guide questions basing now to your own understanding or interpretation. And for you to be involved, I had given you 5 seconds to think about it before I give the answer. Are you ready? Let's start the activity. This is the first question. What is the dictionary meaning of safe house? You are given 5 seconds to answer the question.
The dictionary meaning of safe house is a dwelling or building whose conventional appearance makes it a safe or inconspicuous place for hiding, taking refuge, or carrying on clandestine activities. It is also a place where a person hides from the police, stays to be protected by the police, or is involved in secret activities. Second question, what is the double meaning of the title, The Safe House? Why do you think this was used for the title? You are given 5 seconds to think of your answer. The double meaning of the title safe house is first, the actual place where a person resides and finds comfort. The person may have an emotional attachment to it for it to be considered his or her safe house. Another meaning of an actual safe house is where you keep your valuable things to keep it away from being misplaced or taken away by another being. Take note that safe house is not literally a safe house in the story because the meaning of the safe house is a place where a person hides from the police, stays to be protected by the police, in short, it is a hideout of rebellion who against the reigning of former president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos. Next question. Why did the narrator feel unsafe? You are given 5 seconds to answer the question. There is only one reason why the narrator feel unsafe in this story. That is, the people or the visitors which the narrator calls her aunts and uncles came more often in their house. Why did the mother leave? Do you understand the decision? Would you have left as well? Why or why not? You are given 5 seconds to answer the question. Did you know that the only reason why the mother left the house is because of the fact that she did not want to be affiliated with the rebellion? Next question. Why did the man in the story have band-aids instead of nails? What does this imply about the visitors in the house? You are given 5 seconds to think of your answer. The man in the story have band-aids instead of nails, it is because that time he was tortured, and in the time of Marcos, removing nails is a form of torture. Last question. How does the narrator's view of martial law differ from her father's view? Why does she have a different point of view? You are given another 5 seconds to answer the question. The narrator's view of martial law differ from her father's view. It is because the little girl's view is from a perspective of a child that would be a different from her father who experiences the cruelty of Marcos' regime. The story written by Sandra Nicole Roldan titled The Safe House gives highlight to the point of view of a five-year-old girl and how her family was torn by her father's reaction towards the atrocities of the Marcos regime. It highlights the level of martial faith used by her father in processing
facing the political issues at that time. Political girls in the set at that time shielded her from all her realities, like why her mother left, the seemingly strange visitors in the night, and eventual arrest and detention of her father. It shows an accurate description in the lack of understanding on the part of the little girl during that.